G'day, I'm Brett. In this video, I'm going to run you through all the first aid equipment I carry while doing solo remote area trips into Outback Australia. Now it's important when you're traveling remotely that you carry everything you need on board for medical emergencies. So I've got a few different kits here that I have. My big first aid kit, which remains in the truck, which includes various medications, which I tend to store separately in the fridge to keep them good and also a backpacking or hiking first aid kit, something small that I can carry with me. So let's go through what's inside each one and some of the reasons why I carry them. So this big one, I decided I wanted the larger size so I could fit more additional kit into it. And I chose a hard case style because it's more waterproof. Uh, if I'm taking it out in the rain or whatever, it's probably better having this hard case than a fabric large pack you can also buy. So I've got this. So let's run through the, the big one first. Now this is from St. John's as an off-road first aid kit. It, it has a pretty good selection of the typical things you require. Now obviously much of it might be overkill, like burns type bandages. You might think you might not get burnt, but if you go into some campgrounds and someone's covered their fire up with sand instead of putting it out with water you might walk across that barefoot get a serious burn on your feet and then you suddenly need to have burn bandages so i'll get these behind here so it's a bit of a tray style dual layer now in the front ones this as in, in australia we have a lot of snakes around so i've really packed up the the compression bandages. So I've got a few ones here I keep right on top so I can quickly access them. Then there's of course smaller bandages for just general wounds. Some really big long bandages. Again these can come in handy for wounds or maybe even compression as well for snake bite. Then more bandages, small types, just a vari variation because you never know I might come across a rollover it might not just be me, but several people have been injured. And as I might be the first responder, this is going to help me, you know, help them out of their, their emergency situation. A little wound dressing, immediate, just strap on. And then, of course, gloves if I'm dealing with someone else. And after that, I've got a few extra little things I've added into the kit, like Savlon. So that's this anti antiseptic cream some stop itch plus that's great for insects bites any itchiness put it on the skin really good I carry aqua tabs that's a water sterilization tablet so if I am traveling around and I run out of water I can pull up water from a creek throw one of these in per liter and I've got basically safe drinking water I also carry these on myself while I'm hiking as well and then of course some heavy-duty Bushman plus insect repellent so that does the sand flies, mosquitoes, ticks, ticks, leeches and marsh flies, so a bit of everything. Comes with sunscreen made in as well. Now into the big box. I've got a few extra things here. I threw in a couple of signaling flares. Now these are probably overkill, but again, I'm a solo traveler, so I like to think about the worst case emergency. And if I happen to have, you know, a rollover, my antennas are broken on the UHF or HF and I can't call out for help, I might be able to hear someone in the nearby area throw one of these off, I might get a response. So it's easy to stick in. I tend to use this as also as a storage box for excess toiletries. So I've got plenty of toothbrushes which I can carry on the road, razor blades, tooth floss, all just good, good personal hygiene when you're in the bush, you gotta keep it up. Well, that's when issues might start occurring because you're not gonna get to have showers as often as you'd like. I've also added in some hydrolyte. This is excellent for uh, electrolytes. So a simple throw a tab or two into a, a glass of water. And if it's really hot, then this will help replace those electrolytes in the body and stop you going into cramps. So it's good to have. Throw in some Gurna heat cream for any aches and pains. We've done a big hike. It might help loosen up the muscles. After that, you start to get to more of the, the standard kit that came with the first aid kit. So plenty of 
adhesive strips, band-aids. These are probably the most common issue you run into. And various tools like your, your splinter probes, they're very useful too. I get a lot of splinters and out and about. I usually wear gloves, but they'll come in handy. Tweezers, nice pair of sharp scissors. It's that um, saline solution, so it can be used for just cleaning up wounds. Notepad, face shield, good for mouth to mouth anyone else you might come across. Then of course, a whole range of different bandage sizes and dressings. So again, just more potential wounds. If you have a, a trip over and you get stabbed through something on a sharp stake, well these will probably come in handy to try and pad up the bleeding. Various alcohol swabs and sterilization swabs. Good, really good for stopping infection. If you do get a splinter, give it a good wipe over first before you start digging it out. Otherwise you could get an infection into that that wound and then if you're out in the bush and it starts festering you're not going to have antibiotics on you unless you've got a prescription already from a doctor and you carry it with you. And of course various other little things, small burn dressing, that's where it comes in handy. You might not think you need it but until the day you do need it and this will be really nice to have. A couple of triangular bandages, multi-use, you can either use them to tie up you know, your arm for a sling or just use straight on as a, a wound to stop, uh, a bit of a compression to stop blood coming out. Added in the emergency blanket, some tape. I also added in a whistle. <whistles> That's just good for emergency, just in case I need to signal someone. And then also a digital thermometer, just so I can keep track of my health. If I think I might be coming, in, coming down with a fever, I can at least double check and see, then assess the situation. As again, solo traveler, I need to think about these things. I've been a couple of times now on two of my trips, I've come down with the flu after being in the city or staying at a backpacker hotel. So I picked up some sort of foreign strain or something and ended up having to lay in bed in my car for a week until I got better. But just good to have this around to see. And of course, you'll typically have a little first aid kit manual. So. Under the stress of a situation, you know, you might forget your basic training. This is useful here to have just a bit of a helpful guide. So most of this kit will come as standard if you purchase it, something like from St. John's or any of the other first aid mobs, or even some of the four-wheel drive campus stores will also have one of these kits ready to go. It's such an easy way just to purchase it and you've got it then. Okay, I like to keep all my different medications or anything from the pharmacy into the fridge as that keeps it, keeps it a lot cooler. You can see on the side of my car, the black gold wing window. Just behind that is where I keep the first aid kit. Now it's got a curtain there, but in summertime, the sun beaming through that can get really hot still on this box. So I don't like to keep them in there. As a lot of these medications say, you know, maximum keep below 30 degrees Celsius. So I don't want to come to take them and found after six months in the bush, they're no longer safe to use. So what have I got? Sort of like Panadol headache, ta headache tablets, just general pain relief. Got Telfast, hay fever allergy, just the antihistamines. So you might come through the bush on a bush walk, get a few hairy caterpillars on you and just start breaking out in a massive rash, which I've done on a few occasions across most of my body. So it's handy to have these as a bit of an emergency to try and stop that, that overreaction of the body. Got some Imodium, so that stops diarrhea, which, you know, a few bad sessions, you can become highly de dehydrated, not good for in the bush. And if you have, you know, a few bad bit of fat, bit of food poisoning, then that might help bring it up. Got some wax oil eardrops just for cleaning out ears. I tend to get wax built up in my ears and in the bush. There's a lot of dust around, it's blowing constantly, especially currently we're in a bit of a drought. So I, all that dust is going straight into my ears. So I like to clean them out every few months, just a couple of nights of this, and that helps loosen up any material inside the ears. We've got a lot of little single use eye droppers. Uh, this is really good just for dry eyes. Again, right now, there's a 
cold, dry wind blowing. So this can help just treat the eyes and get them moistened up a bit. And then of course something like strepsils just for sore throats which can come up now and again. So that's a simple little kit, just basically what I need. Now if you have medical conditions, you want to make sure you carry a sufficient supply of your personal medications, anything prescription, and keep them safe somewhere. Now for my hiking kit, this is what I keep in my backpack at all times whenever I go for a walk anywhere. Even if I just go for a short, you know, a few hundred meters away, I'll typically take this with me. If I'm out photographing wildlife, I might come across some snakes and do some snake photography and that could turn sour pretty quick if uh, it's faster than I am. Now again, this one is pretty much custom made by myself. It's, I've had this since I was probably 14. So I've gradually made it into a bushwalking and survival kit. So in here, a wound dressing. I've got an emergency bivy bag. So this is like a, a mummy type sleeping bag, which I can completely enclose myself in. So the worst case of, of bad weather, I have protection. Just a simple shelter, which whatever the case, if I, you know, break a leg, I'm stuck out overnight, which I didn't plan. Suddenly I have some, some means of protection. Just a normal dressing. Here's some of those aqua tabs so I can treat water from out bush walking, run out of water, find a creek. I can take straight from the creek and treat it with this. Some masking tape for repairing things. I've used this a few times when my shoes fell apart, so I duct taped my shoes back together. Another whistle for communications. A glow stick, just so if it gets really late at night, I have some other form of, of light. Here's some fire line tool, flint and steel, and as well as waterproof matches. Just again, if I get stuck somewhere overnight, I want to have warmth, I might be able to start a fire, keep myself going while I stay inside my little bivy bag. Plenty of plasters again, just for typical little scratches, keep the, the filth out while I'm walking so they don't get infected. And most importantly, three compression bandages for snake bite. So again, snakes in Australia are plentiful, I come across them all the time. They never show me any harm or any aggression because I'm, I'm fairly, I think snakes really do pick up on your fear. So if you fear them, they'll pick up on that vibration and then they'll start fearing you. So all the snakes I've met are quite friendly, thankfully. There's some more tape, really fine tweezers, sharp scissors, some fishing line that can be used just for making snares and traps and just tying up things as well. And then a $5 note or a bit of money, just in case I have to be somewhere and want to buy something, like a little ice cream, you know. It does happen on occasion where I'm on a hike and there's a come out and there's a little, you know, place I can buy some food. So I typically don't have a wallet on me when I'm in the bush, but this is handy. And that's basically everything I carry. So I feel pretty confident with this kit that I have what I need when this, a small emergency arises and for the bigger stuff, I've got enough bandages there to treat myself or any other people I may come across in an emergency situation. So I'll pack this up and I'll show you where I store it and why. Now for storing my first aid kit, I'm always thinking safety first. So I want to make sure it's easily accessible. And whether it's myself or any bystander who comes to my aid, I want to make sure they know where it is. So I've got my stickers, first aid and fire extinguisher on the side so they know either this store or perhaps this window will give them access to my emergency supplies. And again, when packing your first aid kit, make sure it's somewhere that's easily accessible and not packed away in boxes or buried under other gear. If I, for instance, cut myself or get bitten by a snake on the hand, I don't wanna be pulling boxes out, trying to dig through stuff and pumping venom through my body. I'm gonna to wanna to keep my arm immobilized and then as quick as possible, Access my kit, boom, bandages on my arm, and then I can start getting emergency help on the radio. So you wanna keep it tied down so it's not bouncing around on your roads and tracks. So this is pretty good. You don't want your first aid kit flying ahead and smashing in the back of your head in a collision. So it's nicely strapped down. 
So you need to decide where you're going, for how long, and whether you need any additional speciality supplies. So if you're doing a cross, cross the world type trip, you may need to add in things like clean syringes and a wound sewing kit, for instance, where those things may not be easily available. So have a think about your destinations. But for Australia, I feel I'm pretty well set up dominantly for, for wounds and snake bite, which are the two things I'm most likely to encounter while traveling around Australia. So if you have any questions about my kit or how I have up my vehicle set up, write them in the comments below and I'll try and answer them for you. So thanks for watching and safe travels. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to help support the creation of more videos, please consider becoming a patron. Click on the Patreon button on the side now. Also, if you'd like to follow along on my journey and future travels, be sure to click the subscribe button below. Thanks for watching.